going back to the naysayers, you just can't listen to them, man. If you have a dream, it's got to start with the vision. You got to visualize it. Everybody's got to believe in the same goals, the same vision, and everything will work. Get rid of the negative people in your life. I haven't had a relationship for three years because I basically dedicated my life to Danos. Doing something big and to changing the world. Like I said, going back to when I was a kid, I always felt like I was gonna do something to change the world. And now I'm doing it. Now that I've built a team behind me and positive people, you know, when it comes to building a brand or whatever, you gotta have people behind you that believe what you believe or else it's not gonna work. Welcome back to the Positive People Posse Living Room. I'm your host, Dom Green, life enthusiast and marketer of Positive People Posse. This is where we sit down with entrepreneurs and creatives of all types. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and uplifting. And of course, marketing. We are your sponsor, 3P Media. We can help you out with your digital marketing solutions. And today's special guest is someone that I met innately back in my hometown of Kansas City, Mr. Dano Oliver. How are you doing, Dano? I'm Greg, my friend. Thanks for inviting me. This is awesome. Man, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Like, honestly, just seeing where we met to where you are now, it's just amazing what you've been able to do in the last couple of years. Like, it's going on nearly three years since we met. And yeah. I'm just like seeing this guy who's just charismatic as the first time that I met you. And you had the biggest belief in your product and I'm telling you that that was the most infectious thing that I've I've ever experienced. Just to see someone go from just being this guy who was hustling seasoning to yeah. this guy who's no quit. There's been no quit nonstop. And so, yeah, man, I uh, I really applaud you and I'm proud of you, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So tell our listeners what you do. Well, what I do, Dano Seasoning. There's original and then there's spicy. It's a seasoning, but it's not just any other seasoning. It's low sodium, it's all natural, it's no sugar, no chemicals, it's seasoned the way it should be made. I didn't know all that when I got into the seasoning business. It just happened to be, I love to cook. I had this flavor, I had this idea. You know, I was a bartender and I was looking for a way out, a way to change my life. I'm like, I can't live like this anymore. Like I need to change my life. And I'm out here thinking all these ideas all the time. And people always say, do what you love to do. You never work a day in your life. Well, one day I brought in some chicken that I made with my seasoning, you know, and I used to make it right here, a little mortal and pestle, you know what I mean? And so I made some chicken, brought it into the bar. And there was one guy there, it was Monday, like five o'clock. I remember it like it was yesterday. And this was 2015, probably early January or something like that. And uh, pretty much I was like, man, you hungry? I got this whole chicken. I'm not eating it. And he was like, yeah. So like I gave him like half the chicken. He took a bite and was like, dude, this is the best chicken I ever had in my life. He's like, why aren't you selling this? And I was like, I'll call it Dano's. You know, because my name's Dan Oliver. So I was like, I'll call it Dano's. And from that point, like I knew I had this flavor. I started putting it in little bags and like bringing it in, and, like giving it to people, telling me what you think about this. And, uh, you know, after like a year, of, like product development, going through measurements and all that stuff and, you know, FDA and all this, I figured out that it was low sodium. So it was good for high, people with high blood pressure and it was uh, no sugar. So it was good for people that are diabetics keto diet, like basically any diet you're on, Daniel's got you. If you love flavor and you're not worried about all the health conscious stuff, we got you there too. You know what I mean? So, and that's all it is. We, we're not trying to make 20 different other seasonings. We built a foundation with one flavor and made a spicy version of it. And it's not super spicy. And that's what Dano's is. It's a seasoning and it's Dano, it's Dan good as Dano Mike might be the best Dan seasoning you ever had. <laughs> that's damn right, Dano. Um, you know, here's the thing. Some people are all talk, but like you actually backed it up when we met because we met at this place called, I believe it was brew top. We were sitting out on the rooftop yeah. and, uh, I think we were just drinking and all of a sudden you were like, Hey man, you want a shot? Or it was a drink. I don't know what it was, but we can never, I remember what happened though. I remember like it was yesterday, me and Brandon were sitting there cause we're in Kansas city. We don't know anybody. We're up on this rooftop. It's cool as hell. The place was pretty busy. And you walked in with like a couple buddies and well, there was no seats available. 
and you and your buddies walked over because we had a couple seats, you know, that we weren't taking. And you're like, hey, you know, you mind if we sit here? We're like, come on in, man. And so, I mean, it was like right then and there, I was like, I like this dude. Like you just exactly what you do, positive people posse. You're a positive person. And I was like, this, this is our guy. Like we're friends with him. You man, know? I love that, man. You're an excellent storyteller. Yeah. And, uh, you know, here's another thing. I hadn't even started Positive People Posse at that point in time. So uh, for, for us to have this, uh, this like r regular dialogue, you know, just us connecting in public, wishing that I could do that right now, just meet people just out in my nature, my natural element, you know, that's what it's all about having those type of connections. And, you know, what you've been able to do with your product is amazing because you're doing the same thing. I feel like your audience feels like they know you and there's no, there's like no let up. Like this is not just marketing for you. This is so natural, you know? And so I don't even think we were going to go to that uh, expo, um, that, that board that you have right in back of you. It was, it was the Kansas city, the tasty, yeah, the tasty expo. Yeah. We weren't even going to go to that. And you gave us a couple tickets and we ended up showing up and showing some support. I brought my crew out there because I was like telling people about this guy. Yeah. I'm like, this Danny guy is fucking awesome. He's hilarious. Like, let's go find this dude. And sure enough, we showed up and you were talking about that seasoning all that evening. Oh, yeah. And then you had, there was some limitation because you couldn't kick, cook, you couldn't cook raw meat at the expo. And so you had to put it on like hot dogs or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> And we tasted it, and I believe every one of my crew, they bought some Danos. And, yeah, uh, you know, like, that's a testament to, you know, not only just being an excellent salesman, because I think that's in your nature, but you're a marketer, but you also have a great product. And I think you have to have all three. You know, you have the charisma. You know, you're an excellent salesman because you're, you're such a natural. You know, it's it's not that you're uh, you're trying to put on the seasoning for everyone, you know, you just want to make a buddy. And right. the relationships I have in my life, it's all about making buddies. I love doing buddies, uh, doing business with my buddies. I love hanging out with my buddies. And, you know, I met a buddy because of that bar experience. Absolutely. Hell yeah. So Sorry. hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. So, uh, so tell people about your marketing, you know, like I see, you know, you go from like maybe a thousand followers <laughs> yeah. to hustling on social media. I'm thinking like literally every day I'm seeing something like there's no, there's no let up. Like it's no. all gas. Yeah, it is. You know, it used to be just me, you know, get back to the story of how I started the business basically 2017 and June 1st was when I had it packaged the way that I wanted it because I had a packaging before. Actually, let me grab that bottle and show you. Real yeah. Quick. Uh, so like this was the packaging before, very generic. And if you look at it, it actually the Danos, they're all capital letters. So people were pronouncing it like Danos or Donos. They weren't seeing Danos, you know what I mean? And it didn't say low sodium big enough. So I'm like, well, this is just generic. Like, and you know, it actually cost me a relationship and everything. Cause she's like, why aren't you hustling that seasoning? I'm like, cause it's not right. I gotta get it right. So to go back to like June 1st, my marketing, I had always done Facebook, Instagram by myself. You know, I didn't have YouTube, TikTok didn't exist. And you know, I was always making videos just cause I love to do it. I love to cook. I love to show people you know, how to use my product. I love to explain it because it's totally different than most seasonings on the market. But so I hustled for basically three years, city to city, state to state, putting Danos on a toothpick. That's how Toothpick Timmy got his name. We'll get into that later. But uh, so yeah, chicken sticking toothpick Timmy's his name. But <laughs> But so to get into the social media marketing, basically what happened is I knew I had an awesome product and I just needed to get it out there to the world. So that's why I was traveling the country because I, you know, I didn't know anything about a business too. When I started Danos, I just knew I needed to do it. And that's the first thing you may, you may, you may not be a business major or whatever, but you know what, just go start the business. That's what I did. I didn't sell a product for a year and a half, but I had a business, had to pay taxes on it, but I started the business and figured it out. You know what I mean? 
but so let's get back to like here 2020 because that's when my marketing really took off social media wise is because when the COVID hit I know it's unfortunate but you know it's affected a lot of people negatively but it was like a blessing to Danos not that I enjoy it but it, the fact that it was like you know we were all the way up in Michigan we're an hour away from our show on an eight-hour trip and we get this text that the show's not happening because of COVID and we're like well Let's hit up our boy shitty coolers. And let's go hang out with the shitty cooler guys and make some videos. So we did that because they're in Detroit. So we went and did that. And then, I, you know, driving home, I'm listening to the news and I'm like, man, Toothpick, you're, you're going to have to find some another job because I paid him in commission. You know, he wasn't a full-time employee for me. Hell, I just figured out how to pay my own bills. You know what I mean? I was never like structurally sound in my business. I was always robbing Peter to pay Paul to get to the next step. You know what I mean? And uh, basically once, you know, March came along, you know, I was always watching like Gary Vandercheck and he's like, if you're not, if you're, if you have a product and you're not on TikTok, like you're missing the boat, you know what I mean? So I was like, all right, you know, I was doing Facebook and I was doing Instagram, but it's so hard to get traction on there because they've been around forever. And, uh, so I started doing TikTok and all of a sudden I made one video that was like a crab cake and uh, it got all the Maryland people pissed off because they're like, where's the old bay? You don't pan sear it like it's supposed to be broiled. You know what I mean? It's like it created controversy, but it also moved the needle on the sales. So I was like, OK, create a little controversy and it gets people interested. You know what I mean? And so that's when like, really, I was like, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And the sales just kept going up and going up. And I'm like, well, this is it. And so I started talking with the marketing team and they basically, you know, I'm like, I need an awesome website because I'm getting traction there. But my, you know, my conversions are only like 5%. And so I was talking, I talked to several different marketing companies and then I met with one marketing company and they basically made me an offer for a small retainer, but they were going to take a percentage of revenue and for doing like a $20,000 website, but they wanted a percentage of revenue and they saw the way sales were going. So I was like, well, that's totally fair. You know what I mean? So that's what we did. And then as sales just continued to explode, that's where we got into, uh, <laughs> where sales continue to explode. That's where we got into talking to our, like our partnership agreement. And he was like, cause I needed, I mean, it was moving so fast. Like I was literally having 500 orders come in in a day. You know, I can't sit there and print out 500 labels, pack 500 orders and get it all to the post office like myself. Like I had toothpick. I had another friend, Carissa. She was coming over helping me. You know, I was paying them to, you know, come over and hey, let's have a drink and let's package some Danos and get it to the post office. You know what I mean? And so that's what we were doing. And then I, I partnered with the marketing team and with me and the Mark, you know, we made a partnership and basically he had 20 employees to offer me. And he's like, let's take this to the next level and do the marketing right. And that's when we really started to see, that's when you're seeing something every day. Cause not only is it just me posting everything, I had a team of people behind me putting together professional content, professional cameras, and now we're just getting better and better and better really for the first cent from like basically like May till probably October. We were just trying to catch up and trying to like get settled in on things. Now we're really starting to dial in on more like professional content. You know what I mean? Man. Like really put, put dollars into the, you know, to where I got a camera guy and he's making Dano's videos and you, it's not even me, you know what I mean? Cause we're just, we're trying to get the product out there. So when you ask like, what's our social media, like basically now I'm also partners in the marketing company. So now we're putting, I mean, we're, I'm not make, yeah, we've done a couple million dollars, but I'm not making any money because we're investing everything back into the business. You know what I mean? That's what we're doing. Nobody's over here collecting, putting, getting rich and happy. We're trying to build something way bigger. We want to do way more for people with our marketing companies. You know, somebody that has an awesome product and they don't know where to start, like what I did. Well, guess what? I've made all the mistakes. You know what I mean? I've been there. I've robbed Peter to pay Paul just to get by, you know, 
I need five hundred dollars. Hey, buddy, can I borrow five hundred? I'll give it back to you when I get back from Kansas City. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so I mean that marketing wise, we are trying to take it to a whole next level with our marketing company. We want to help anybody with a product or an idea. You know, if you have a little money or whatever to invest, you know, we can help you do everything. Man, I love it. I'm sure, I love I'm sure it. we can probably work together too. Yeah, you know, I love it. You know, I love having these conversations about marketing uh, with other marketers because, you know, it only sharpens our steel, you know, like seeing what you guys do and how you guys do it uh, on the social media front. We're more SEO strategy. We're more right. ad driven strategy on Google and then retargeting and stuff like that. Um but on the social media front, it's just, it just hadn't been an interest. And so I admire what you guys are doing. And so, yeah, there could definitely be some, uh, some crossover because we do help our, we help our clients with the social media aspect, but we're all in on other areas that, you know, get them the ROI because some people lack not being able to go viral, you know? Right. And so what we try to do is enhance their solutions a little bit different on that aspect that like, don't bank on social media all the time because you might not want to do this every single day because, or they don't want to empower another person to handle their social media. So um, everyone's different in their marketing path, but yeah, I definitely admire what you guys are doing and uh, definitely want to work with you guys in that facet as well. Um, you know, that being said, you seem like you're just a student to the game, you know, and you only know what you know. And so you're absorbing so much information uh, because you're going through experience and you're like, well, hell, I can learn that. And so is, is that always been the case? You know, like, let's really just kind of go back to, you know, you being uh, a bartender. Right. And then that maturation is saying, I've got this aha moment. Right. Now, like someone really believes in this product. This is some good shit. Right. And now I'm going to do something. And it's, it just seems like for me, I'm like one of those gung ho guys too. If I get really fired up about something, I'm going yeah. for it. Right. And so uh, tell me about your upbringing. Like, how'd you get from, you know, you were this kid in Kentucky and then you became this adult and you're a bartender and now you're running a successful outfit and you guys have, you know, five employees, you got two pick Timmy, you got, Oh, Brandon that I met back in KC, tell him hi for me as well. I'll do it. Um, yeah, tell me about your, your backstory on that. Well, I'll, hell, I'll go back to since I've been a little kid. I, I was Please do. My parents were divorced when I was like five years old and they got remarried right away. So I was basically raised the youngest out of two real brothers, two stepbrothers and three stepsisters. And I was the youngest. So I've always been a super ultra competitor. You know what I mean? People, you know, when I used to bartend, people used to joke, like, I'll gamble with you on anything. You know I mean? You say it's red, I'm going to bet you it's white. You know what I mean? So I've always been a super competitor because I was always getting beat by my brothers. You know what I mean? Whatever we did, because they were always older and better. So, you know, I always wanted to be better than everybody else. You know what I mean? So I always had this competitive attitude, competitive mindset. And I've always told my mom, since I was a kid, like I've always been a big thinker, man. And I've always like known that I was going to change the world somehow in my own way. I just didn't know how it was. You know what I mean? I was never a school person. I can never pay attention. You know, you tell me to read a book. I can't, man, because I can't, I can read all, I can listen to an audio book, but when it comes to reading, my mind is so, I mean, it's always spinning. I'm just looking at words, you know what I mean? Cause I'm always just thinking, but like I've always, you know, even when I went to school, I went to school and uh, I was on the Dean's list and I dropped out because my brother was at home working for an insurance company, making money. And he's like, man, he's like, come home and just do the insurance. So I, you gonna go three more years of school. I'm like, yeah, I don't even like school. Like I'm going to come, I'm going to go start making money. So I got in the insurance game. Well, it turned out it was like the worst time ever to get in insurance. And this was like in like 2001 to like 2003 when the insurance was so competitive. I would quote 10 people. I was great at talking to people, getting them on the phone, getting them to give me their information to give them a quote. I was great at that. But I couldn't write but one out of 10 if I was lucky. 
because the market was so competitive, you can't save somebody a dollar. You can say you got the best customer service all you want in the world, but if you're not saving money, good luck. Facts. But, right. But uh, so, yeah, what I did is, you know, I've always been had the ability, ability to talk to people. And the best salesman is somebody that listens. You know what I mean? When you talked about like absorbing things, like I'm just a lesson, I'm a, a student of the game. Like I listen to people. And as an entrepreneur, you know, a lot of, you'll run into a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't listen to people. And then maybe that's why there's a lot of them that aren't successful also. You have to be able to absorb what people are putting out and understand what people are feeling and, you know, just absorb things and put it together in the right way. And, uh, but so anyways, to go back to the insurance, I did that for two years and I was like, I gotta get out of this. And then I found the coolest job in the world, which also gave me a lot of education in manufacturing. I went out and I got a job with these electronic engineers that were all from Ukraine and they could fix any sort of electronic equipment manufacturing wise, like spindle drives, servo drives, PLC, CPUs, conveyor belts, CNC mills, all this stuff, you know, heavy stamping, bending presses, whatever, we fixed it all. So I really got educated in like manufacturing processes and I loved it. But when that job fell through, just because whatever it was, we won't get into that. I was like, you know what? I want a laid back job, like a bartender. You know, I knew a guy that worked up at the bar and he's like, man, I make four or 500 bucks a night. I'm like, I need to be doing that. You know what I mean? So I actually, there was no jobs available as bartending wise. And I was like, you know, I had a little bit of money saved up and I was like, what about cooking? And he's like, you want to cook? And I was like, I love to cook. <laughs> so he's like $10 an hour. You got it. Start tomorrow. I was like, see you tomorrow. So I came in and I started cooking and I was like, I'm just going to use this as an avenue to get to where I want to go. You know what I mean? I'll just show them that I'm the best cook and then I'm going to work into bartending. And that's what I did. It took me about six months and then I was full-time bartender. And while I was cooking, and this is funny because the whole time I was cooking, I would make like my, my bone in skin on chicken recipe. I'd bring in my, my own seasoning that I would make and I'd, I'd run it as a special. Every time I did it, it would sell out like within an hour because it was uh, at a bar where they had pool leagues, like billiards. So everybody's like, oh, what's the Dano? Spe you know, I, I wasn't Dano at the time. They were like, what's the special tonight? Like, what's he back there cooking? And when I did this chicken, it would sell out. Like people went crazy over it. But still at that point, I was not, never thinking to develop it into an idea. You know what I mean? Or a product. It just didn't hit me like that. I was over here thinking about disposable toothbrushes and, you know, flavored yogurts that make your dog don't fart and stuff like this. <laughs> like seriously, like I think way outside of the box on stuff. And, uh, I was all the ideas that I had take me several millions of dollars. And I, well, I don't have several millions of dollars. I got like $5,000 in my bank account. You know what I mean? And uh, so, so literally I worked into the bartending and then after five years, yeah, the first three years I enjoyed it. The last two years, I was like, how am I going to change my life? How am I going to get out of here? And then when that guy said that, you know, I was already bringing in chicken for people made with my seasoning, still never thought about it. But when he said that, light bulbs went off i knew what i was going to do with the rest of my life and i never i never listened to all the negative naysayers that's one thing you can't do if you're going to listen to the negative people i wrote that down naysayers yeah i'm telling you that can't was going to be my them. next thing yeah is, can't do let's it. talk about these naysayers all right um, i actually put something out on uh, my personal instagram i believe it was yesterday and you know like Oftentimes I put things out there not to get to everyone, but to get to a few people. And I do that because I know that I've lived through that experience, you know, and that naysayer aspect, I, I think it was, um, it's kind of like a little puzzle thing. It says, what do they know? And then the last line says, go for it. Because I've been in that position often you know, where I'm sitting here and I'm like, this is my belief. I truly believe in whatever it is that I'm doing. All you need are the right people. Not, not like everyone. Don't be for everyone because right. everyone will come to you eventually, right? But you just need the right people. And so turn off the noise, you know, like 
for me, it's easier now because I've learned that. Like I can turn off the noise and be okay. But talk about that. Talk about those naysayers from who were saying like, oh, this guy is just robbing Peter to pay Paul or he's going going city to city and he's making a little pocket change, but where's this thing going to go? Let me tell you a little funny story. So when I first started it and I was working on the recipe, working on the packaging, like this is my little evolution right here. This is where it started. Let me putting it in a bottle and writing Danos on a sticker. You know what I mean? I remember going to Christmas and like giving it to people for Christmas and stuff. And like when they would leave, guess what was left behind? The Danos. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, don't forget that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, my family believed in me, but there was also some negativity. You know, my brother would make jokes like, oh, I'll come out with rhinos. And you know what I mean? He's apologized to me since then. But, you know, it was always jokes. And, uh, especially before it ever happened, you know, and I'm telling everybody at the bar, like, yeah, I'm going to make this seasoning. Like, here's some in a little baggie, put your finger in it, try it, <laughs> tell me what you think. And they're, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to call it Dano's and I'm going to sell it all over the country. And they're like, oh, good luck. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, thanks. Put a little more fuel in my fire. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, the naysayers, man, <laughs> there's so many of them out there. I love positive people posse because there's so much negativity out there. I was listening to a a motivational speaker the other day and he said that 80% of the people in the world want something to be pissed off about. They want something to complain about something to be pissed off about. Like there's so much negativity and it just needs to change. I mean, we see it with the election, you know what I mean? Everybody's like, you're either this or that. And everybody's like against each other. Like, why can't it, why does it have to be that way? Like, why has it come to this? Like, I don't understand why everybody just can't be cool. You know what I mean? And support people. And that's why I love when, when we met you, I was like, this dude's going to be my friend for the rest of my life. Like, he's positive. Like, yes, sir. you know, in, in Louisville, I mean, I love my city, but I think there's a lot of, there's not a whole lot of entrepreneurial spirit in Louisville. And maybe that's just because I hang out at the wrong bar. I don't know. But I'm just saying there's not like a whole lot of like, support like when i met you and your friends in kansas city i was like these dudes are all like i need to move to kansas city yeah it was like a breath of fresh air you know what i mean everybody was just so positive and like upbeat and like you know what's going on like hey you you were introducing me to everybody like i met yeah 20 people that night you know what i mean it was just cool but uh Going back to the naysayers, you just can't listen to them, man. You just can't listen. You, if if you have a dream, because it's got to start with the vision, a dream, and you got to visualize it, don't listen to anybody because their opinion is not your opinion. And don't let anybody stop you. There's been several times, several times, Dom, when I could have stopped. And I mean, it's blood, sweat, and tears, man. Like it's no joke. Like I've cried about Danos. You know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't. I haven't had a relationship for three years because I basically dedicated my life to Danos, to change, doing something big, and to changing the world. Like I said, going back to when I was a kid, I always felt like I was going to do something to change the world, and now I'm doing it. And I dedicated three years of my life. Well, now that I've built a team behind me, and positive people. You know, when it comes to building a brand or whatever, you got to have people behind you that believe what you believe or else it's not going to work. Everybody's got to believe in the same goals, the same vision, and everything will work. You know what I mean? Get rid of the negative people in your life or try and help them. Try and look, you know, I got a few negative people in my life and I try and give them, you know, ways to be positive. I'm like, man, I'm like, think about this, like, you know, think about how much you talk about other people. Like, don't talk about other people. Think about yourself. You know what I mean? Work on improving yourself rather than focusing on the negatives of other people. You know what I mean? Like, get the, get rid of the negative people around you. You know, stay positive, positive, keep bossy, man. I love yes, it. sir, man. You get it. You get it. And I, I feel like because you're an empath, I can feel it. You know, like, you really, you really care about people you got this genuine nature about you it does impact you in a different way but it's also that turning point 
that says, I've got something to prove, not just to them, but to yourself, that you're not crazy. Because (laughs) being an entrepreneur is one of the craziest shit that you can be in this world because it's, you're just jumping. It's just a leap of faith. And I look at any organization around and you see bodies in there, people that are employees or uh, customers. And I look and I think about it from the entrepreneurial uh, spirit. There was one man or woman or a group of individuals, a couple buddies that got together and they were saying, let's build this dream, this vision. And it really starts with that, that conception of like the inception of like one person, this crazy idea. And yeah. then it sparks, it's infectious. You yeah. need that energy. And when you can have that momentum, things really get going for you. Absolutely. But if you look around your circle and there are people around you that are not empowering you and they say, you can't do that. There's, that's already been done. You go to a grocery store, there's a shit ton of seasonings. Right. Why would you do that? Like how, you don't even have enough money. How is this going to happen? So what's Danos? What's Danos? <laughs> what's Dananos or Danos? Hey, that's why I say you don't know till you Dano. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so they don't know. And no. it's, it's all about that spirit and that energy that you have to have around you. And, you know, that, that negativity can be fuel for positivity. But you have to be looking on the other side of saying, if I will put in work, I will get a positive outcome. It might not be delivered tomorrow or the next month, mm-hmm. but you will get some positive results. Absolutely. And, and it comes down to the right relationships and the people you meet along the way, because here's the thing, your naysayers are probably going to be the individuals that have known you all your life. Right. But when you meet a guy like me, I meet a guy like you, you don't know where I came from. You just materialize out of thin air with good energy. And I'm like, I'm getting behind that spirit right there. Right. And that is, is infectious and that's what i've learned along the way in my life in my journey to success in, in positive people posse because you know before i met you um this was something that was in my mind that i didn't want to tell anyone about and i wanted the balance of working with small businesses helping them with their dreams and goals and also the influence of helping people with their dreams their goals being able to have product we have merchandise and stuff that people buy from all around the world now and they don't even know the full extent of positive people posse but it's something that's infectious and so before i even told anyone about it you know i was drawing logos and stuff and i had a six-figure job i had a job that was paying me damn good money and i was traveling the world and when i lost that job which is crazy story the week before I was getting ready, the week before I lost my job, I was about to buy this like $160,000 sports car cool. <laughs> just to show everyone that I've made it because right. I want to prove naysayers, you know, right. because right. they're looking at objects as a form of success. And uh, luckily I got fired before I bought that car <laughs> and I didn't know what I was going to do next. And some of the, I went and interviewed some jobs and, and um, you know, I was going to be forced to move out of Kansas City and I wasn't ready yet. And there were some jobs that I should have probably just got handed to me. I, I, th- I thought that I was well overqualified and everyone told me that I was overqualified. But I said, I'm going to start my own thing. I'm going to start Positive People Posse. And I did that. And I told a couple people that I respected and they were like, huh, yeah, why would you do that? And then others were like, dude, I believe in you. Go for it. I didn't listen to the naysayers. I just yep. went after it. Yep. And, and, I, and I, I really appreciate the ones that were empowering. I remember those ones. The ones that were naysayers, I, just don't, I don't really have to think about them too often. I have something more to prove to myself because I want to help other people. I want to empower other people. You know, this is, it's bigger than me. You know, We've got six employees. We've got people that are working around the states right now remotely and giving them that comfort and freedom to work remotely. And 
live their their life and do do the things that they want to do as far as their hobbies and stuff you know mm -hmm. and we believe that we can influence a lot more people a lot more business people to go after their dreams just like you you know it's infectious man when good energy meets good energy yeah. man that positivity is like yo you can't handle us man i can't wait to party <laughs> with you again danny <laughs> We, we didn't get you down here to the Derby one year, man. I think so, man. Like right. I was, I was actually, this was the year that would have been the year to do it for me too. Yeah. You know, like both of us are, you know, really energetic in our businesses and, you know, um, you know, it's hard to set aside some time when you're like thinking about these calendar years, like years go by so quick. This I'm like, it's Christmas right now. Are you kidding me? Um, but like, we need that. We need that fuel of positivity and getting around, cent like centralizing our ideas and, and collaborating, you know, that collaborative environment, you know, it sparks a lot of good things. Like I know Dano's is like, is going to be even bigger than it is now. Uh, but there's going to be some other great things that are going to be on your journey as well. Oh yeah. I can feel it, man. Hey, I'm nonstop. I can sit here and yeah. I can spit spitball ideas with you all day long. Me too. Me Drink too. A beer is what I love to do. I just you're going to create that. You're going to create that community in Kentucky, in Louisville, Louisville, <laughs> you're, <right>. Louisville. <laughs> you're going to create that community. You know, if it wasn't there before, it can be there now. You know, like that. That is what you have. You have that capability, and uh, you know, in layman's terms, sometimes we just have to be. We have to think more simple. And simple is the most complex thing out there. And I believe uh, you have the simplicity, not calling you dumb at all. Uh, yeah. You have the simplicity of relating with people. And yeah. when that's infectious, that can change the world. And it has to change the world. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> I, did, I did a video the other day. I don't know if you saw it. It was on uh, Black Friday. I walked into Target because I was getting a rolling pin because I was going to make some chicken and dumplings. And I walk out. And I'm like, man, why is there so many people here? And I'm like, oh, it's Black Friday. Right? Because I was thinking it's the day after Thanksgiving. Why is there so many people out? And I was like, oh, it's Black Friday. But then I made a video and I'm like, you know what? And a lot of people know this about me that know me that, that I'm not like the most quick witted. But I'm very well thought out in the things I do. You know what I mean? Yes. I learned that as a young age to think before you act. Yes. So maybe I was a crazy little kid, got in trouble because I would always react. And then it was like, I learned to think. Yes. So I'm a, I'm a heavy idea person, deep thinker. Like I'm well thought out in any decision that I make, especially in business, because you don't want to make a wrong decision that's going to affect your business. You know what I mean? I want to stay positive. Yes, sir, man. I feel that. I feel that. I, I'm a, I'm a little bit of both. You know, I can be very, uh, too witty for my own good sometimes yeah <laughs> where i haven't read the room right, <laughs> right. <laughs> there might be a bar fight <laughs> like, hey guys i'm on your team uh yeah. but at the same time you know i, I think the same way I, I think on the the grand scheme of things like what do i want to change like like okay how do i want to affect someone else in, in, in a positive way you know and not just you know, saying shit for shits and gigs, because when we do that, you know, like people end up getting hurt and they won't even tell you that they're hurt. They'll just show you with their fist, right? right. <laughs> or, or in other ways where they'll do some things maliciously behind your back or talk behind your back and, and right. all of that. And, um, you know, if I can leave any type of footprint on this planet, and I believe you agree with me, it would be that um, the body of my work was not about who I affected negatively, but they're going to remember my spirit and my attitude and right. build that, that foundation. Then when someone's talking about talking behind your back, they're probably going to get smacked because someone's got your back because you've right. done them right. You know, and right. uh, it's your legacy. Yes. And like you, I've made some mistakes along my way. And I think, um, I think when you learn, through those mistakes and you know how you've negatively affected people that you're like well damn i don't want that that feeling that burden on my back mm -hmm. you know like i'm over here trying to build something good yeah but you got to take care of people along the way and uh you know make amends you know it's never too late to make amends with people that 
could say anything bad about you. Not to say that you you have to care about anything and everything that's said about you. Right. But at the same time, you know, if you if you can really take that in and be like, man, I'm thinking about this person in this one time. Let me follow up with them. You know, like you don't know how like what that person may need at right. that point in time. And I feel like that's an energetic spirit. That's an energy aspect where you're thinking about someone, you can call them, you can, uh, you never know what could happen. You know, that's the beauty of life. Absolutely. So let's talk about a couple of negative experiences in your life. You know, we've got, we got some positive experiences. Yeah. Let's talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> well, I got one on my mind right now. Uh, and that's, you know, I, and I'll be honest with you. I can't say that I actually have an enemy in my life. You know, I don't feel that I've ever really done anybody wrong in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe I've been in a fight when I was a kid or whatever. But I'm saying as far as like morally and like stuff like that, I, I was raised by a very good woman. So I got good morals and values. And I don't feel that I've ever like really done anybody wrong in my life. I'm always looking to be like the better person. You know what I mean? And uh, when we go back to the marketing and how Dano's was blowing up on TikTok, and you know, the success was just at a crazy rate. Well, our idea was that we wanted to start hiring influencers. So we started paying influencers. Well, once you start paying somebody, it changes things a little bit, it changes that relationship. And what happened was, you know, we had almost 40 influencers at one point. And once you pull that money away, because we're like, we first off, we did it wrong. Like we didn't have the right kind of contracts. We wanted to be the coolest seasoning on the market. And we wanted to be like, hey, here's some money, do what you do. As long as you're making good content, we're good. But we weren't getting what we were kind of like expecting. You know what I mean? Cause we had codes on everybody to where we could see what was being pulled in. And we're like, all right, well, we still want to be with these people, but we can't continue to burn this money that we're not getting the ROI on. And I think sometimes, you know, like a lot of influencers, they don't, they don't necessarily understand business and ROAS and ROI and all this, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, we can't just, we love you. We love the content but let us change the way we're going to do things. And then let's reevaluate and go back into it. Well, you know, there's groups out there and then they start talking negative about you. And I'm like, you know, that's not cool. Like I've never done burned any bridge. Like I've never done anybody wrong, but yet, you know, once you get money involved and, you know, people are doing this for a living, but we were growing so fast, we made the wrong decision in how we were managing the influencers. So we had to, retract regroup and now we're starting to get back into it but we're doing it the right way we're paying for a result you know what i mean is before we were just throwing money around yeah and it was the wrong way to do it but when you talk about like negative experience it's probably the most negative experience of my life mm. and like like has depressed me quite a bit because i don't like people thinking negatively about me because i have nothing but love to give yeah. You know what I mean, there's no ill intention in my body. So it's like people look negatively upon me now because, oh, everybody may feel that like they made Dano's this big brand. No, I've been working for six years nonstop, 100 hours a week. You know yeah. what I mean? This is nonstop shit right here. And it's like this brand was built on a vision, people that believe in persistence never giving up, not listening to naysayers. You know what I mean? It's all that. And so the only real negative experience that I've had basically in the last year of my life is that mm. I had now, but we're trying, I try and go back and reconnect and be like, Hey, you know, let's do something. We just, we had to restructure our business. You know, business is business. You can't just throw away money and go sure. out of business. Yeah. We're trying to change the world, not be gone. You know yeah. what I mean? 100%. So that like talking about negative, that's negative. And, uh, but 
Negatives can always be t- turned into positives. 100%. 100%. Exactly. Think, you have to flip it. You have to flip it. And, you know, like that mindset, I, I just, I do believe that not everyone has that mindset and they don't know why, but they have to see examples. And so things that we do in our life and our every day, um, you know, it's, it's really easy to say, I'm going to work on this later on. I'm going to work on this later on. But like, you have to really seek um, a path to find things that are going to counteract all your problems and, and figure out how you're going to start thinking differently. Because it really is all, it's a mind game. You know, the entrepreneur game is a mind game. You know, you will tell yourself that you're not worthy of something. You will say that this is not going to work. What's going to be my next move if this doesn't work or whatever. Um, you know, you, you really have to be, have that mental toughness in order to say, hey, I'm going to fulfill this, my promise to myself that I did everything that I possibly could. And, yeah. you know, for you, you know, it could have been like, hey, you're borrowing small money back in the day. Right. You know, like the money that you need in order to get your business to the next level, right. you know what you have to do now. And it, and right. it ain't that small money anymore. Right. You know, and so um, every aspect, you have to be thinking positively because you can beat yourself up with your inner, inner self, your inner words. And, you know, like, I think we've all been there where we, we almost thought that you're like, why me? <laughs> you're like, why? Hold on a second. You know, check yourself. Why not me? You know, why not? Why, why am I not worthy of, of more? You got to ask for it and you got to put in the work. And, and what you've done was you put in a lot of blood, sweat, tears Absolutely. into this. You hustled Sacrifice. your ass off. Yep. And then now you get to look back and say, damn, I'm glad I did all that. And, yeah. you know, like I, podcast listeners, you know what's coming, but my mama always said, and I, I said this a couple of times, but you probably haven't heard it, but my mom said, if you start <laughs> off at the top, you would have nowhere else to go. And that lives with me. That, that short little phrase right there, if you start off at the top, you have nowhere else to go. Well, you have to go through right. your shit. You know, yeah. like that's what life is all about. You know, uh, black, brown, white, yellow, whatever color you are whatever uh sexual orientation we all have to go through our stuff and uh you know it's it's living testament you might not know exactly my full experiences or what it'd be like being a black man in america or whatever but you can also attest to struggle especially your community in louisville you know you look around and you're like well where are my investor friends at where are my 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 movers and my shakers at you know like where are the examples like when you're pulling up from scraps and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you have to be that example, that could be really tough, man. So yeah. again, man, you know, I'm proud of you on that, that aspect. You get it. You get it. it. You just gave me a great idea for a t-shirt. <laughs> My mama says. <laughs> <laughs> My mama says. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, like make mama proud, put that yeah, on I- a t-shirt too, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I believe that, you know, it has to start from some aspect of like that adolescence, you know, like I, I look, I look back and, you know, some of those, those problems that you had in your adult years, of like trying to figure out a way or whatever, we can probably look back to our past and say like, well, I didn't learn this way. I didn't know that, or I could have been taught differently. If my parents would have did this for me, or if I had this, then I would be this person. It's like, well, now you know that you don't have those things. <laughs> so what are you going to do to go learn those tangibles and at least watch other people and be a student of the game and yeah. just absorb, you know, like, man, where, where we're at and helping um, our clients now in marketing is bar none to where we first started. Yeah. And, you know, like, I believe that, you know, we're just one connection away from really, you know, making some really major moves in, yeah. in helping people. And, uh, you know, like, that's what it's all about. The synergetic belief that, you know, we can connect with people, our listeners. We got podcast listeners from around the world now. They're yeah. going to listen to something that you said. They're going to pick one thing out of this, this podcast. And they're going to say, like, I like that guy. And I was listening to a podcast. 
and this guy Dano said this, and that's what I needed. That was my my aha moment. Right. Clicked, and right. you know I'm gonna get up off my ass and say I'm gonna make 2021 my best year because during the pandemic, you've been able to grow your business. Yeah. And early on, we we we're about to shut down too. You yeah. Know, like, pandemic. I was like, uh, I don't have any more to give. Like. Yeah. What else do you want from me? <laughs> and then and then it was like, oh, we just gotta get scrappy. We gotta get creative. Right. We gotta do things right. differently here. And you know, like you just start calling the wolves. Plant and yeah. Plant and you got and plant those seeds, like you said those in that seeds. video they sent. Plant Put those seeds because they don't grow. And and yep. help people, man. Yeah. You absolutely. help. If you're out there to help and not hurt, like shit, someone's gonna give you a lead. One of the, one, you know, I'm always listening to, you know, I listen to a lot of Tony Robbins, Simon Sinek, and all these motivational speakers all the time, especially when I was starting and didn't know what exactly I was doing as far as like structuring and all yeah. that. Dude, I'd be at the gym. Other people are listening to music. I'm listening to Simon Sinek. I'm listening to Tony Robbins. But one of the best quotes or rules or whatever something to take from this podcast is if you have the vision and you have the dream and you put forth the effort and don't always be overwhelmed because everything can be looked at as easy you just have to do it yeah it's just doing it it's putting a puzzle together like a puzzle yeah it's hard when you dump that puzzle out but if you sit down and you just do it, eventually it becomes easy once you get toward the end. But the, the, the quote or whatever, what I wanted somebody to take from this is that if you start putting that puzzle together, there's going to be people that come into your life, positive people for a reason, you know, kind of like my marketing company that came into my life, like it was the perfect fit. Like they, they, they happened to drop for a reason because I vetted other marketing companies. And then I was not impressed with like any, what any of them had to say, you know, as far as what I wanted to do. And then I met with them and I'm like, perfect timing. This is it. Let's go. Like, let's do it. And it's like, and there's been so many steps along the way, like people that have come in and helped me, you know what I mean? It's not always that everybody's looking to get paid to help you. You know what I mean? It's just helping those people along the way. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've helped you know, hopefully this podcast helps people to anybody that listens that has a dream about a vision, you know, about a product idea. I mean, send me a message on Instagram. I'll give you something. You know what I mean? I mean, I can teach. We can teach people how to start a food product business. You yes. Know? Yes. People I mean, will come into your life. When I started Dano's, I probably reached out to five, six, seven different other seasoning companies like trying to contact the owners and I always get a message back like he's too busy sorry good luck in your ventures you know what people reach out to me I can't tell you how many guys I've called you know my time's worth something and I spent an hour on the phone with somebody I didn't even know that just has an idea you know what I mean and I spent an hour on the phone with them telling them well you got to do this do this do this do this it's all pretty simple you just got to do it you know what yes I mean? dude it comes back man it comes back it comes back to a magnitude that, you know, that person will be thanking you and it makes you feel good when you can deliver and you can give someone a bit of your knowledge. And, and that's what we believe at Positive People Posse is like we we take calls all the time and, you know, like I get people free advice, like play by play. This is what I would do. And when you you want us to do it, that's when we charge that ass. That's that's my saying. We will charge that ass as soon as you have us do it. But right. like, I should have more value in my, my ideas and my thoughts and stuff. And those aren't my ideas until they're executed. And most often, most people don't do it. You know, I, that's what I've learned is uh, they just don't put the energy behind it. But when I get behind someone's product or their business, you, you best believe, you know, I'm charging that ass because I'm putting my energy into it. You right. know, and so, um, you know, like, and I just want to do business with my buddies, you know, like that's what it comes down to. So we, we want to build relationships and that's the same thing that you just do, you know, naturally, you know, and instead of being so proprietary, you know, like about anything and everything, like you can also have a mentor that you've never even talked to and just watch Dano's guys, just follow him, 
you know, and, and just watch because you have two seasonings, two seasonings, but you got all this content. Yeah. You guys get creative. Yeah. Food, you guys, you, you know your audience and knowing your audience is really important. And also you got the energy to be in front of an audience too. And, you know, I think a lot of people want to be the owner and not show any face. And nowadays we need to, I want to know who's behind this. I want to know what, what, where's this magic sauce coming from, you know, and, right. and, and you're doing that really well. And uh, I think, you know, talking to the listener that, you know, is thinking about their idea, whatever it may be, um, just think about like, if who's, who's going to talk about your product better than you and step outside of your comfort zone, just a little bit yeah. doses at a time, because like where you started, you, you were a loud mouth guy, but you're not this loud. Your volume, your, your volume is even louder now because you're like, well, shit, I'm starting to build a community here now, you know? Yeah. And when you do that, that energy is just so infectious. And, you know, you're bringing smiles to my face every time I see something on, on Instagram. You know, I, la I laugh. Sometimes I'll comment. You'll see some of my personal stuff and, you know, uh, you'll laugh, you'll comment as well. And, you know, I, I know that the respect is uh, mutual, but we want people to know who we are, you know. Yeah. You're the best dressed man I know. I <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm, I'm over here trying to be as casual as possible right now these days because, I had a girl tell me uh, that I dress too nice, if you know oh. what I mean. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But I got her attention. <laughs> there you go. But, you know, like all of, all of those good things, um, you know, one thing that I like to wrap up with, uh, with all of our podcasters or podcast guests are, uh, I want to know what your, your biggest strength is, but we're going to start with your weakness. So... Um, the this, this strength, we like to say superpower, and your weakness is just your kryptonite. So what's your kryptonite? I have a lot of feelings. I guess I'm a very empathetic person, so I get my feelings hurt. Really, yeah. Like when I see negative comments or, you know, stuff like that, and people trying to dog me or whatever and, like, dog the brand or this guy's a joke or he's fake or something, it hurts my feelings. Like, I can't yeah. help. You know, yeah, my human. partner, he's like, dude, he's like, look at Apple, look at, you know, these big corporations, like you just gotta like block it out. And I'm like, I don't even want to look at TikTok anymore because yeah. of some of the negativity, you know what I mean? And if I'm not having a good day and then I go home and I read five negative comments, I'm like, I don't even want to look at my phone anymore. It's yeah. just, it yeah. brings me down. But you know, sometimes uh, your weakness can be your strength too. Well, you guys have a million followers, so that by percentage, like that's going to happen. <laughs> well, I, I get that. I understand the law of numbers. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, that's what Phil's always telling me. I'm like, man, it just eats me up because I don't do nothing wrong to nobody. Yeah. Like these negative comments just get me, man. It eats me. Yes, yes, yes. And then your superpower. But you can't tell people that. No, you can't. No, no. <laughs> My listeners know. Our listeners know. But, you know, the people that are going to listen, you know, like, they're already bought into you if they made it past this far, this past, this minute, uh, which would be about an hour in, they're already bought into you, you know? And, and so um, there's a lot to take away with people talking about relationships and building relationships through product and putting yourself out there. And when you put yourself out there, you know- I put my name on it. Exactly, you put your name on it. You can't walk away from it. No. And so uh, what's your superpower? Seasoning, I make good seasoning. <laughs> Give me the tagline, say it. I make the best day in seasoning there is. <laughs> That's right, man. I, and I, I believe that, you know, next to that is your ability to build relationships quickly, quickly yeah. and uh, making it personable and, uh, you know, not about, you know, color or, or anything. It, you know, I know that you've got just so much diversity within you, man. You, mm -hmm. you, you're a guy who's just, uh, just so just warm, you know, and, and, and that, you know, is, uh, that's a capability that not, not a lot of people have. And so I know, uh, you're raised, right. You know, you're raised yeah. mindful. And then, um, you know, last but not least, um, you know, I want to just also say like what you guys have been able to do with your marketing, getting sponsors in NASCAR, the NASCAR circuits and, 
and other aspects. It's just, it's amazing what's, what can happen within a year's time. Yeah. But, and you know, what? all it's, that happened in the six years before that, there was work up until that moment. Persistence. 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 So, Persistence pays. And you know, pay, when we talk about making money, money's just a result. Yeah. Money's the result of hard work, persistence, and hard work. You know what I mean? You just got you got you got to do the work. What you're saying, also, like you've kind of said earlier, but you know, like you're putting money back into your business. It's not about it. you know all this this fancy show show like show. You know, this I'm showing you all my jewelry, my Rolex, or whatever. You know, it's you're trying to build something that's bigger than that. And um, you know, that being said, you know a lot of people look at uh, success as something that's just like, once you get here, you'll be happy. And right. you got to stay curious and you got to stay growing. And because when I get something, if I would have got that sports car, I would have been like, what, what's next? You know, like that fades, you know? Right. So that energy, like you have to, you have to have that energy it has to come from somewhere. You have to have something that's going to inspire you more than money because Money's just an exchange of energy, if anything, because at the end of the day, you, you get it and then you have it and then it could be gone. But, you know, what else? What are you going to do? Like, is it about more money? You know, it's got to be made. Mine is more people, you know, more people I can help, more people I can empower to be more creative, uh, all of the above. And, um, you know, another last thing. What's one thing that you'd like to get off your chest if you need to get anything off your chest uh, for people to know? Like, it could be about you, it could be about, you know, the world, uh, like, you know, just coming through struggle, whatever it may be. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a deep thinker. This is this is a question I'm gonna be thinking about the rest of the day. I'll be like, I should That's okay, that. that's okay. <laughs> you can get back to me. But, uh, man. I don't, I don't, I don't I got I got to think on it. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That's okay. Hey, you gave me an honest answer too. Hey, you and know then, what? Here's the one here's the one thing. Everything that I do is not fake. It, I'm super passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about the people that work with me. I'm passionate about anybody that's involved in my life. Like I'm always out for the better. I'm not a negative person. We never got back to two pick Timmy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hang on. Can't forget about two pick Tim. So that is a little caricature. If anybody's never seen him, he actually wears a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. But this was like one of the first times we worked together. And I was like, go get you a character drawn up. But that's a piece of chicken on a toothpick that he's got in his hand. And basically, you know, like I said, when we were traveling the country, getting the product off the ground, we always sample on a toothpick. So I remember it was one day, like I was trying to turn my camera on or something. And there was a lady standing there like waiting for a sample and there was no samples out. And toothpick was just like looking down, like cutting, not talking to her, not in the con. He just like you know, have one of those moments where he's just thinking about cutting that juicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I'll get you a sample in just a second. If I can get chicken uh, stick and toothpick Timmy here, you know, give you a sample. And, then, and I said it and it was like toothpick. And now, you know, it's toothpick Timmy. Love it. And how can everyone follow you? Uh, Dan, at the at sign Dano seasoning on every platform. We're on uh, Pinterest. Starting a Snapchat, but definitely TikTok is our biggest. Over a million followers on TikTok and uh, Facebook, Instagram, basically all social media platforms that I'm aware of. And uh, also YouTube. So we got a YouTube page. We got almost 8,000 uh, subscribers on there as well. So, you know, TikTok, for those of you that may not know, it's one minute clips basically. So TikTok, if you want to see quick Dano's videos and maybe figure out what you want to eat tonight, and you want to go through them real quick, go to TikTok. If you actually see a, a recipe on my YouTube, well, I'm going to walk you all the way through it. It may be an eight minute video. You know what I mean? So. No, and it's really damn good, guys. Like I, I put it on everything. Even if the food is already cooked, like it's going on there. Like before cooking and after cooking, damn good. 
<laughs> hey, Dano, I really appreciate you being on the living room. Guys, like and subscribe. Follow our boy Dano and tell him we sent you. Uh, and like yeah. always, live freely and stay positive. Peace out. Thanks.